Sinimulan ngayong Miyerkules ng Senate Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, at Climate Change ang investigasyon nito sa pagtatayo ng resort sa loob ng protektadong Chocolate Hills sa Bohol. Ang investigasyon ay bunsod ng magkahiwalay na resolusyon na inihain ni na Senators Nancy Binay, Joel Villanueva, Lauren Legarda, at Cynthia Villar, gayon din ang privilege speech na ibinigay ni Senator Rafi Tulfo noong March 18. Nauna nang sinabi ni Villar, pinuno ng Chambers Panel on Environment, na dapat managot ang Protected Area Management Board, PAMBI, sa pagpayag sa pagtatayo ng Captain Speak, ang viral resort na ngayon sa Chocolate Hills. Nagtataka ako kung paano nakadaan ang resort na yon sa Pambi, ani Villar noon. Parang hindi nila naiintindihan na ito ay isang protektadong lugar, dagdag niya. Ang panel, sa isang mabilis na tala na ipinadala sa media, ay nagsabi na ang pagdinig ay naglalayong investigahan ang iba pang mga protektadong lugar sa Pilipinas na sumasa ilalim sa pagsasamantala at paninira. Ang mga posibleng punto para sa talakayan sa pagdinig ng Senado sa Merkules ay kinabibilangan ng mga sumusunod. Posibleng kapabayaan ng pamahalaan sa pag-iingat at pamamahala ng mga protektadong lugar, mga batas, regulasyon, proklamasyon at patakaran na nakakaapekto sa proteksyon ng mga napreserbang rehiyon ng bansa upang mapadali ang mas magkakaugnay na batas. That's all. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Senator Bato de la Rosa. We now recognize Senator Rafi Tulfo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ang DNR, ang ahensya ng gobyerno na natasang pangalagaan at bantayan ng ating kalikasan. But because of recent events, lumilitaw na ang DNR ay isang ehensya na matatawag kong bantay sa lakay, turo-turo style. Bakit po turo-turo style? Nagtuturoan. Kapag kami po ay tumawag sa DNR para mag-usisa, mag-imbestiga tungkol sa mga illegal structures, tungkol sa mga paglapastangan sa ating mga kalikasan, nagtuturoan. Ito pa po, ang pinakamasakit at nakainsulto. Ito pong DNR Freedom Information Manual. Hindi ko alam kung kailan nilabas ito. Na kung saan ipinagbabawal ang DNR na magbigay ng impormasyon tungkol sa mga nag apply ng ECC at mining. God damn. Is this of national security concern? Kaya bawal sa inyong Freedom of Information Manual, bawal kayo magbigay ng impormasyon tungkol sa mga nag apply ng ECC at mining permit. Unang lumabas itong kalokohan sa Bohol, Chocolate Hills. After my exposure, nakatanggap ako ng maraming sumbong tungkol sa paglalapastangan naman ng kalikasan sa Digos, Davao. 97 na mga structures na naitayo doon. Out of those 97, there are few na naisyuan ng ECC. But marami doon ang hindi pa. At patuloy pa na nagpapatayo ng struktura. At nang tumabag po kami kung anong gagawing hakbang ng DNR, we were told, bigyan daw ng two years palugit para pagdesisyonan nila kung isa sara ba ang dapat isara o hindi isara ang dapat hindi isara. Again, hindi ho ba kabalastugan na naman yan. Now, meron naman po ako natanggap na sumbong. Sa Bohol pa rin. Ito po ang isang shipyard na kung saan 19 hectares po na mangroves ang sinira para mapagpatayo ng shipyard doon. Now, alam ko na ipinagbabawal ang pagputol ng mangroves base po sa Republic Act noong 1990. Pero bakit po pinayagan ang pagpapatayo ng isang shipyard sa Bohol? Bakit po nabigyan ito ng ECC? Ngayon, magkaharap-harap tayo, sana wag ko kayo magturuan. Dahil it will be an insult to us here, Senators, na in front of us, magtuturuan pa rin kayo. And I'm happy na nandito si Secretary Yulo Loizaga, na I'm sure yung mga katanungan ko namin 
tungkol sa paglapastangan sa ating kalikasan ay masasagot na maayos. Black sand mining sa Zambales. Nung last budget hearing, Secretary Lizaga, na pag-usapan natin to, and you did promise na you look into it or better off, ipapahinto yun. Anak ng dagat. Sana ba? Tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang paglapastaran sa ating black sand sa Zambales. Ito pang masaklap. Libre na nga ang pagmina nila ng black sand doon, karamihan ay from China, and then ibinebenta pabalik sa ating gobyerno. Anong klaseng kabalastugan po yan? Ibinebenta sa reclamation dyan sa Pasay at sa iba pang mga reclamation sa, sa iba't ibang parte ng Pilipinas. Kumuha sila ng black sand sa karagatan natin and then, nang libre, ibibenta pabalik sa atin. Hindi pa kalokohan po yan. You guys have to explain. Matagal na pong naging pabaya kayo dyan sa DNR. Hanggang ngayon, patuloy pa rin sa pagiging pabaya. Lumilit o tuloy na kayo po yung mga protektor ng mga nagsisirang kalikasan. Jiho, masungi Jiho Reserve. Bakit po nabigyan ng ECC ang Rizal Wind Energy Corporation o Vina Energy? Napakatagal na po na problema itong sa masungi Jiho Reserve. Hanggang ngayon, di po maresulba-resulba. Bakit? Sa ngalan ng ano? Sabi pa sa kanto, baka sa ngalan ng Tito Vic and Joey. Yung tatlong muka sa isang papel. Nung panahon yun, kasi hindi lang ang Tito Vic and Joey ngayon eh. Yan lang po, Madam Chair. I'll reserve my uh, other questions later. Thank you very much, Senator Tulfo. Uh, I wish to acknowledge the presence of Senator Padilla. Thank you. And uh, meron daw opening statement po, si, virtual opening statement si Senator Bongo. We acknowledge Senator Bongo. Madam Chair, mamiyana po ako magbibigay ng statement po. Salamat po. Very much. Uh, nasa biyahe daw. Uh, before we start with our discussion, may, may opening statement. Wala daw. Wala daw. Be thank you. Before we start with our discussion, may I first call on the committee secretary to put an oath the resource persons. Honorable Senator Robin Padilla, good morning. Honorable members of the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources and Climate Change and the Committee on Local Government. Colleagues in the DNR and co-workers in government, good morning. May I respectfully begin by thanking the two committees for initiating this public hearing to shed light on the reported exploitation and defacement of certain protected areas. This was highlighted by the recent discovery of a resort structure within the Chocolate Hills Natural Monument, a 13,994.95 hectare protected area and recognized UNESCO Global Geopark. Today's inquiry in aid of legislation into the status of and reported illegal structures within the protected areas is a testament to Congress's unwavering commitment to conservation and environmental stewardship, recognizing the critical importance of protecting and maintaining the natural, biological, and physical diversities of our environments, most notably within our protected areas. These protected areas serve as vital sanctuaries that support the web of life that consists of unique diversity of biological life in the land, air, and water that sustains them. These invaluable terrestrial, coastal, and marine ecosystems not only serve as crucial habitats for endangered species, they provide essential ecosystem services for food, water, and energy security, and they embody the specific culture, spirit, and identities that constitute our nation. While the intersecting ecological, physical, and social geographies have different boundaries, ultimately the establishment of protected areas is legislative in nature. We respectfully recognize that these are therefore deeply in line with the, with the authority of Congress to investigate 
and assess the effectiveness of the law in terms of existing protection and conservation measures in these areas, as well as to identify both old and new threats and propose, le and propose and legislate amendments to the existing law to enhance this area's preservation. It was for this very same reason that Congress in 2018 passed Republic Act 11038, or the e NIPAS Act, which increased the number of protected areas and provided strong conservation measures and penalties for its violations. However, in the past four years since its passing, the DNR has sought to implement its rules and regulations, contending with realities on the ground, including disasters and the pandemic. The e NIPAS law has been tested against the context of rights that preceded its passing, the various national and local laws and formal and informal agreements that have altered the distinct landscapes and seascapes, the need for livelihoods and the support to the national economy, the challenges of inadequate budget, number of personnel with knowledge and capacity, as well as powerful influences and pressures, both benign and malignant. The Chocolate Hills established as, was established as a protected area by RA 11038. It is a symbol of our national heritage, and this has become under scrutiny due to the construction of a resort facility that may have overstepped, in fact, legal and environmental boundaries. The Chocolate Hills are not only a figure of our nation's natural beauty, but also a proof of our commitment to conservation. The presence of the resort facility undermines these values and threatens the integrity of the natural monument. Unfortunately, we believe our investigations will yield even more human-induced impacts on this fragile geological system. Our initial investigation has revealed that Captain's Peak Resort appears to be ti a titled property among the vast alienable and disposable areas within the area. Not only is there one title or two, we have discovered there is a third title involved. Its construction and operations are without the necessary environmental compliance certificate, a clear violation of the NIPAS Act and the Protected Area Management Board resolutions that have been issued. The DNR is also investigating various environmental violations, including those related to the Clean Water Act. On March 14, 2024, our regional offices have issued an indefinite cease and desist order against Captain's Peak Resort. Because of this, however, it has the effect of loss of livelihood. We have also now also facilitated the enrollment of the displaced employees of Captain's Peak into the Dolles Tupad program in order to tide them over in the meantime while this process is undergoing. This is a process together with DOLE that we hope to be able to replicate in other situations where there will be displacement. These actions and the continuing investigation of the PA demonstrate our commitment to enforcing environmental laws and preserving the integrity of the Chocolate Hills Monument. To date, there are 248 protected areas as mentioned earlier by Madam Chair. These cover 7.4 million hectares. Given the vastness of this area, we humbly acknowledge the enormous challenge that the department has in addressing the conservation and protection of our biodiversity from species loss, given as we must take into account the impacts of climate change, human activities, which may alter land and sea and coastal use, and bring about pollution. This mandate must be fulfilled by the DNR despite its resource limitations to ensure compliance and our limited enforcement capacity. Nonetheless, under this administration, we remain steadfast. When I assumed office in 2022, I made it clear that the continuing preservation of the country's indigenous species as part of our natural heritage, and at the same time, we must harness these resources for the benefit of our country, would be one of the key elements of the department's shared vision. In closing, the department is fully aware that what has